Uh, yes, today's topic is uh, integrated proteomics data analysis uh, to knowledge. So at first, you know, the, uh, I'm going to cover a couple of uh, like a software updates. Uh, one is isobaric labeling analysis, and second one is a label-free analysis. There are many other updates, but I think th these two are uh, one of a couple of major things. And then uh, I'm going to uh, discuss about the uh, knowledge integration. So mass spec, you know, the uh, based on proteomics. This is pretty typical, you know, the mass spec uh, uh, based in you know, the proteomics. We have a protein and digest, and then we run uh, either you know, the single phase or mud pit, and it generates MS1 scans, and then tandem scans, and with the tandem, we search against the silico databases for a protein identification, and next step, we measure the abundance of a peptide or proteins, and then uh, finally, we do uh, functional analysis in which can be pathway analysis or gene ontology or protein interaction or network analysis. So uh, first update is uh, isobaric labeling analysis. So uh, isobaric uh, label, uh, labeling analysis, it can be uh, iTrack or TMT. So you have uh, multiple samples and label and then mix together and then uh, run uh, temper and it will generate the MS1 scan but the MS1 or you know the tagged labeled one you don't see any difference but when you generate uh, frame the ion you will see the uh, report lines in MS2 scan you can see all uh, different uh, abundance of uh, uh, peaks so you can uh, compare uh, the abundance of a peptide so uh, first step is normalization we do uh, Basically, the approach is uh, pretty much the same as uh, spec count and SEF approach. So each report line is uh, uh, divided by total intensity. Uh, so it, if there's any mixing error, it can be uh, uh, corrected. But if you have any, depending on your project, you know, if your project is an IP sample or some something you know, specific, then uh, it, or targeted one, then uh, this normalization should not be uh, applied. So uh, we have a census to uh, software uh, update. It provides it support you know, CID and HCD dual scan, and also it support MS3 scan. So if you have a fusion and if you have a, a multi-notch approach, then uh, it can be analyzed by using you know the census two software, and we it can extract all report time from uh, all you know the spectra, and also it can do. Uh, impurity correction and also uh, we have intensity threshold. So when you, instead of using single best spectra, if you use multiple spectra, then uh, you can see a much better result compared to single uh, spectra. So this is your log ratio and also this is frequency of uh, uh, the report line measurement. So when you, and expected uh, ratio is zero as it's a log ratio and with the multiple spectra again you know it uh, it generate, it uh, closer to uh, zero ratio and also another uh, good parameter is uh, intensity threshold uh, so you without intensity threshold you will see uh, it's a ratio distribution is pretty wide uh, again the expected one is zero and then with the intensity threshold you can get you know the uh, close a uh, better result. Uh, this data is relatively old, but uh, we recently analyzed the fusion data, and you'll see not a much better result. So, uh, TMT or any ISO or you know, eye track, uh, you can do MS3 based uh, TMT or eye track analysis, and this is a template. Uh, example, so you can have a all report ion, uh, the mass you can specify, this is default for templex, and also you can do some uh, purity correction. Also you can specify mass tolerance uh, upon ppm, and also again here, this box you can do intensity threshold. So I can show you a real uh, demo 
of a TMT analysis. So this is a TMT analysis. This is, you can see all you know, the average intensity on protein level and also normalized and non-normalized value you can see. And when you click, you know, the, there are many different buttons. Uh, the default is a table view, but once you click the uh, protein graph view, uh, let me click this, that uh, pretty already open. So here, the list of protein you can see, uh, when you select uh, some protein, each protein there are multiple uh, peptides. And you will see the graph of, uh, uh, or overall, you know, all peptide in you know, the graph. You can see the report line overall how, how it look like. And also, you can see you know, the in a stacked view. And also, individually, you know, the peptide you can also you know, the, look closer. So this is just a uh, ten plex uh, TMT uh, example. And also, this uh, was analyzed in the fusion, idle fusion or uh, lumos. And also, you can also uh, look at uh, peptide graph view. So each peptide, uh, it can have a more than one scan. So let me pick this one. Each view is pretty similar to protein-based view. So again, this is one peptide. There are multiple uh, spectra. They match it. So they have all the same sequence, but different scan. So again, individual one, you can also uh, take a look. And also the in TMT or I, you know, the eye track, it's good to make sure that you know, your uh, result is uh, good in the quality wise. So uh, here, uh, this is a templex uh, TMT. So here we can see one, two, three, four, five. And so on, but this you know the TMT one to seven you know the report lines are pretty close, uh, but this is a uh, fusion data. So when we zoom in one to six, we can see very clear signal, and one to seven when we zoom in, uh, we can see very clear you know separation. Even though overall you know look like they're pretty close, but uh, they actually well separated. So it's about 40 ppm. So you know you can clearly you know the measure the abundance of individual uh, report IM. And also we have uh, intensity uh, the distribution. So here you can see that you know, this is again the fusion data. So the intensity, low uh, intensity report IMs are pretty rare. So based on earlier, earlier slide, you know, the previous slide, we can see uh, there are some you know, the low noisy uh, report IMs, but with the fusion, we can see the data looks much cleaner. So overall, you know, this report line, the signals looks very uh, clean, and without you know much background noise. And uh, the next slide is uh, the comparison pages. So when you have a templex, maybe you may have a, a biological replicate. Uh, maybe let's say one uh, sample as a triplicate and another you no know, triplicate and and so on. So you can compare, you can group, you know, one to six, one to seven, one to eight, for example, report iron into one group and the uh, rest of them into another group, and then you can compare statistically. So you can calculate you know, uh, p value, q value, and also you know standard deviation. So this is your overall view. So you can sort by any you know, the column, and then you can quickly find which protein or peptides are uh, significantly regulated. So label-free analysis, this is the next one. Uh, so label-free, uh, there's some you know, the replicate, and instead of uh, labeling, you just, you know, the individual experiment will, uh, should be done, and then uh, calculate you know, the uh, extracted ion chromatogram, and then calculate again uh, some statistically you know, the uh, p-value or q-value. So we have a chromatogram alignment uh, and using retention time and accurate precursor mass and retrieve unidentified peptide. And we pick, you know, the pig area under the curve. And also we do ion injection time correction. Uh, and also we do normalization. So as you see that there is some uh, 
missing one we can retrieve. And also we have compared uh, our tool to different tools like MaxQuant and, and, and Normeda. So uh, comparing to you know the velocity and sensors. So we have you know the uh, Hila sample and uh, triplicate and the fusion and it's a uh, that we loaded the different amount so we can see you know, the, how accurately we can measure. So this is expected ratio and sensors is pretty close and also you know, it's a pretty tight you know, the, uh, the distribution. So and comparing to MaxQuant, you know, it's uh, like uh, uh, the sensors, you know, the result is uh, closer to expected ratio. And also we also uh, compared it to spec count approach. So spec count also pretty tight, and also uh, comparing to you know the intensity uh, based approach, spec count is a little you know the far. But spec count once you have you know the very abundant you know the spec count protein, then you know it will be more accurate. But you know once you have a lower number of spec count, then uh, you know the accuracy will go down. So let me uh, skip this part uh, and knowledge integration. Part. So uh, this is a uh, overall view, overview of uh, uh, our platform and how we integrate into a knowledge base. So people run sample and it generates a raw file, and we analyze the data in our uh, platform, uh, IP2, and also we have many other tools integrated into IP2. Uh, and then you, when you analyze the data, this can be done in single box or if you have a, a large number of data or many users and also if you want to do more like a computationally intensive data analysis then uh, it's a common to use a cluster or a cloud computing so you can be hooked up to the IP2 uh, and then the user can access to IP2 uh, through the network uh, they can use it computer where they can use a mobile device and then uh, up end we started integrating uh, many different knowledge bases uh, into our platform so this is some of uh, examples that we pick so it can be pride uh, bio GPS rectum and also a protein network uh, uh, databases so this is uh, one uh, this is a reactant pathway browser that we integrated into IP2. So uh, here, you know, you can see overview of a pathway, uh, but you can uh, double click and zoom in into, and then you can select a you know, specific uh, uh, pathway page. But this is again the overview, but uh, in real data analysis, more practically, people uh, select a uh, number of uh, uh, protein actually during the analysis let's say you identify the number of proteins or quantify the certain number of proteins that uh, you are interested in and then you can click and then you'll uh, generate you know, the pathway the list and also it'll calculate our p value and then FDR based on pathway uh, enrichment and then once you usually click uh, each uh, pathway then you'll uh, redirect to the, you'll move, uh, go to a specific pathway and this is interactive in you know, the, uh, the graph that uh, provided by a Reactom team and then they can click and then they can uh, they can do further analysis. And also the bio GPS integration. So uh, we, again, you know, the after, you know, the analyzing the data, when once they get a list of a protein, uh, then they can see you know, the bio GPS uh, button and once they click they can uh, see further you know, the, they can get further uh, information in the uh, bio GPS uh, page so uh, the future work uh, we are uh, integrating more and more you know the uh, knowledge base basis into uh, our platform so uh, we the next one uh, we want to integrate the EBI Pride. Uh, there are a lot of requests from users that they want to uh, integrate into uh, Pride. And also we have a uh, Pint, you know, the HLAP, uh, and also BioGrid, interacting with Pi story. But there are actually many more uh, that 
that, uh, that we, are, we plan to add. And also, uh, data analysis point of view, we also have uh, uh, some tools that we are working on and PTM localizer. localizer. So instead of ASQL, we are working on some new like a localization tool to calculate you know, the probability of on you know the PTM site. So that's uh, pretty much you know the done. Uh, and also blind PTM analysis tool. Basically, this is done, and now we are working on integration into the our, our platform. Uh, and also big database search, uh, like when you have uh, some uh, microbiome database, for example, in which is very big. So uh, we are working on some new algorithm to analyze it uh, in a better way. Okay, this is uh, uh, EH Lab, you know, the team uh, who are helping uh, this. So uh, EH Lab, uh, the John, and also the Matthew and Salva, and then uh, Rohan and Tom. And yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you, Robin. Are there any questions? Yeah, this is Andrew here. I have a question. So when you talk about pride and pint integration, can you describe a little bit more what that might mean? Is it where an identified protein, you know, you want to know what's happening with that protein in other experiments in, in Pride or Pint or something else? Yeah, uh, Pride and Pint. So Pride is, uh, uh, okay, that's a little, okay, these two are not exactly, kind of a little different. So uh, Pride is more like a data repository, uh, as I know. Uh, so when people uh, have the data in the IP2, they want to actually the, click the button and they can actually transfer data, upload it to the uh, Pride automatically. That's, you know, the, the usual, you know, the re request so that, you know, they can, we can build, you know, the, uh, contribute more data to the Pride and they can, so that, you know, people can easily access, you know, the for publicate, like a pub uh, for publication or whatever, you know, the region. So, uh, but you know, the pint is a little different. You know, the people can, you know, the uh, up, we can upload, and then you know, the people can query, you know, the the certain, you know, the protein or gene, you know, the throughout, you know, the on you know whole, not only the specific project or data, but you know, the throughout in the whole, you know, the uh, repository, as I know. Uh, and also, you know, the BioGPS probably, uh, I don't know, maybe you didn't ask about BioGPS, but this uh, BioGPS currently, you know, the, when people click the specific protein, then uh, it display, you know, the, uh, the more further information that uh, in the BioGPS page. Uh, but the next one I'm thinking about, I don't know, maybe, you know, the, maybe we can do a little brainstorm uh, later. Uh, but again, this is like individual one, so people have to find, you know, specific, you know, the protein, often you know, they have a thousand, but they can eventually, you know, narrow down a certain number of, a similar number of uh, the proteins, and then they can click and then they can do further, you know, the analysis. But uh, another thing that I'm thinking uh, of is that probably we can, instead of, you know, the individual, you know, the protein, maybe there must be some way to do, like, large-scale data anal analysis. So we can somehow, you know, the has you know the all information and then somehow we you know display more like a like large scale you know report instead of individual individual is very you know the useful but at the same time there can be some way to group you know the protein and then display in a different way for example you know the, uh, if you see pathway analysis so I have a, a 1000 let's say uh, proteins and then uh, when I Using you know, the uh, reactome uh, the analysis API, it'll actually uh, digest all one uh, one thousand you know, the protein and then group them and then you know the, uh, actually it present me with you know the more like pathway group pathway in you know, the basis. So it group you know the proteins. So this is a much you know the you know easier way to not easier way in a different way you know the, to analyze the data. Anyway. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. So, so um, and just to confirm, you you do have one-click access essentially to do your the PSEA analysis. Is that right? 
Yeah, uh, GPS yeah. analysis, right? You, no, you no, no I, so, so your idea of essentially passing, you know, rather than a one-by-one -one gene or protein passing to BioGPS, passing in a whole list, like you do for Reactome, I think that's a great idea. And it's something that's battered around for a while. So you can imagine, for example, if you pass in a list of proteins, we would then, instead of this bar chart thing that you see, we would do a heat map. So you could see for this entire list, you know, where are these proteins expressed and can you find patterns there? Exactly, um, yeah. And, and, and I guess I was just asking, um, you know, another, well, you know, one, in addition to the visualization, we had talked about doing some sort of enrichment analysis relative to um, not only gene ontology terms, but sort of saved gene lists. So within BioGPS, we have people, just for convenience sake right now, say, uh, save, you know, a few thousand different gene lists, which presumably are all biologically coherent. They correspond to genes that were differentially expressed in their, their data set and so on and so forth. And so that would be also another potential analysis where the input would be a gene list, the output would be like Reactome, it's, it's sort of enrichment relative to a library of, of, of user contributed gene sets. Uh, so that's another thing we can think of. I, I was just wondering if that one overlapped too much with PSEA and I just need to think about that one a little bit. Yeah, yeah, such kinds of like a large scale data analysis is actually you know, very, very useful. So uh, even though you know the here you know the people find you know some uh, interesting you know the proteins uh, based on you know the like a data analysis score like a quant score you know protein IDs you know the based on you know the identification score FDR whatever but you know the uh, later on you know that still they will have a still you know the large number of proteins some thousands of you know the proteins still they have it when they actually compare to other experiments they, they will have a really large number of you know the uh, easily like uh, five thousand or even more uh, and then. But you know the data analysis point of view, you know that they can find some significant one. But at the same time, you know the uh, when they apply, when they can look at this data in a different, you know, the angle from you know the like a reactome pathway analysis, you know, point of view, while you know by GPS, you know, we can see you know, different way like a geo or some different way we can look at you know this data, and then we can that they will be very useful. So uh, often you know people make you know the, uh, some when they make uh, some figure for the publication often, you know, heat map or some kind of overall view of data, in which it will be very super useful. Yeah. And, and, and just a quick thought. I mean, that's sort of where I was starting, actually, with integration with Pride. Uh, not just sort of a data deposition argument, but actually a, you know, data query. In the same way, we, you know, we can do a heat map against our gene expression data set. You might imagine a heat map showing you know how these list of gene, list of proteins behaved in other data sets in Pride. Don't know if that's yes. something. Yes. Else. Yes. 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 So uh, last time when I visited, you know, the EBI, uh, we mostly we discussed about you know how we technically you know the repository uh, put our data into you know Pride repository. But yeah, definitely you not. Know, uh, we. I also discussed with John, uh, I think several weeks ago, that definitely uh, I also want to, you know, if we can do some kind of a query and, and then just, you know, uh, some way and then display in a better way, you know, like more like a heat map or something like that, that would be really great. Great. Thanks a lot, Robin. It was a uh, yeah, really yeah. nice presentation. And I think Pei Pei had a, a message in the chat box. Oh, okay. Could you please? I don't know if Pei wants to. Yeah, uh, I, can, I can read it out. Um, so uh, Dr. Ping said, uh, could you please elaborate more on your PTM software? Is it able to deliver multiple PTM identifications? Is it based on the charge differences or molecular weight differences or both? Multiple PTM identification. Multiple PTM identification. Uh, multiple PTM identification. Is that uh, uh, multiple PTM? Uh, we can do. Of course, you know, user can specify uh, many different PTM uh, uh, in the analysis, and. Uh,
So, and then each one, so the tool that I mentioned here, let me go back to here. So, uh, so the PTM localizers, so this is a new software that uh, I and uh, another like a developers are working on. So, uh, A-score is the one that uh, mainly people are using uh, currently, but A-score support only uh, fast for PTM. While, you know, the PTM localizer, localizer you know, the, uh, it can calculate you know, the probability score on any PTM. So this is pretty much, you know, uh, uh, it, it, we are pretty much get to the end, pretty much, you know, uh, wrapping up this project, hopefully soon. And uh, also we have a very different approach. So A score, you know, it calculate, you know, the, uh, uh, and so uh, PTM localizer, probably I can, you know, give a presentation next time, but it's a scoring function is very different. Uh, so uh, I'm pretty, you know, the, Confident that this, you know, the new algorithm should be more give you, you know, deliver uh, much, you know, the better result. While you know, A square when we manually uh, check, mostly it's working fine, but some situation, you know, we saw it very, you know, strange, you know, the score. Uh, and also the PTM. Uh, it, uh, if I let me see, and also we can look at, you know, the we have a protein, you know, the overall like. Uh, View. I don't have the slide here, but uh, and then we can see globally, you know, the where PTM appear, and then we can compare to different sample, you know, the uh, what is the score, and also we also have a uh, modified and non-modified in you know, the uh, PTM site, you know, the comparison based on currently based on spec count, but uh, we are also working on the you know, peak uh, intensity based approach. I don't know they can be uh, answered, but 